Hi guys, uh, my name is Ravi Jagannathan. Um, I'm a principal engineer of virtualization and secure cloud computing at Juniper. Today I'm going to be talking about the challenges and the wrinkles that people come across in deploying network function virtualization. The, um, this is basically, Juniper has several network uh, virtualized product. And I'm just going to take one example and then you know, um, go into that. It's, everybody knows Juniper's MX platform, the routing platform is, is pretty much an industry standard. Uh, we, we have another product called virtualization, that is virtualized MX, VMX. That is the virtualized instantiation of our industry, you know, popular uh, Juniper's MX routing platform. Now, I'm just going to go over the use cases and then actually describe why it is a business critical and what are the issues related to that. One of the use cases of VMX is it's there in the um, you know, a data center gateway that's used by data centers and for service providers. And uh, there are marketing requirements that is there on this um, orange blocks. And then our value proposition of what VMX does in such deployment is there in the green box downwards. So this, is, uh, this actually product has a very good inroad into the market. And uh, it enjoys a lot of you know, customer you know, um, eagerness into it. The, uh, another use case is uh, a virtual PE. And um, it's required in the scale out scenarios. And then you know, uh, particularly to start with, there is a you know, lower bandwidth and uh, how it expands. So those are the scenarios. And we provide a value proposition that is down you guys can see. The, uh, it has you know, many features that the actual hardware MX platform you know, has. And uh, here is another use case where it is both for service providers and for data centers. You know, when they want to expand, they want to expand to a new service. That, not that they want to you know, mean, invest a lot of money in it. To, want, to start with, they want to check out how the market behaves. And this is an inexpensive or relatively inexpensive way to test out the market. So the virtual aspect of our MX platform is very important in the industry. Now, since it has been MX has been heavily used everywhere, the um, one other thing is that um, one other thing is that it is business critical, and uh, being business critical. We really have to, you know, uh, take into a lot of things into account. This is our MX platform that has the control plane and the forwarding plane that is shown in the blue and the green box. Now we deploy the same controlling plane and the forwarding plane on a commodity server um, as two different VMs, and that's why we call us virtual MX platform. Uh, VCP runs as its own VM. FP runs as its own VM. We made it work in you know, the um, libvirt environment using VeraSearch, and we moved it to OpenStack. And in that aspect, we actually are encountering you know, a lot of interesting issues that will be interesting to everybody that is deploying NFV. So you can, instant, you can run multiple you know, virtual chassis of MX on the same commodity hardware. And that is a great advantage. Depending upon your load and everything, you can actually, you know, on the server hardware configuration, you can actually run more of it. From the use cases, one can see uh, VMX use cases are business critical. It tends to have, you know, um, many, many concurrent subscribers, you know, uh, kind of deployments. So these use cases are very critical. And um, so this project, this product, you know, should be deployed in, a, in an environment where it has to have, it has to provide very good resiliency. And one other thing that normally comes to people's mind, you know, whenever they do, you know, cloud, any kind of cloud, I mean, including OpenStack, is, hey, if something goes wrong, we can move this VM from there to over here. So you know, it's just easy. We will do live migration, or you know, uh, VMware calls it vMotion, right? We could do that, and that actually, you know, should go a long way. 
if you actually look at, look at it, if you have deployed NFV in real life, you'll realize a few things. You know, moving from one server to another, it comes with a lot of you know, wrinkles. First of all, the VMs that are serious product, a really selling deployed serious product like VMX, tends to use large pages. And when they tend to use large pages, the synchronizing the memory from the, the server that you're starting from to the destination server in doing live migration, it could take a long time to synchronize. So live migration can happen a lot slower than you think. Or if the memory rates are rapid and the range is pretty wide, it may not you know, even converge as soon as you like. So you know, the live migration traffic itself could be substantial that you need to separate it out into a different subnet. It's another problem or another challenge in the network design. And if somebody's using SRIOV, then what happens is, yes, you know, SRIOV, live migration kind of scenario is possible, but the technology is not proven. It's coming up. It's emerging. It's another thing, uh, another aspect one has to worry about. And nonetheless, you know, one needs to worry about security issues also as you are moving a VM from one place to another and how far away the VCP and VFB VMs are going to be. So all of these things become a real issue. So what tends to be a done deal, a done solution in, in a cloud or in, a, in an OpenStack environment, it actually turns out that it's, it, has, it comes with a lot of baggage, a classic solution like live migration. So we need to start thinking differently when it comes to deploying NFV if we are one of the serious users and you know, people are getting serious about this. I'm going to talk about you know, a few possible solutions. And uh, surprisingly, those solutions tend to be very akin to what the techniques that hardware platform deploy. Because the functionalities and the customer, customer expectations are very critical in this case. One scenario is you know, somebody, let's say, deploying a control plane VM on a server. They can pick up another server and deploy VCP as a standby. So they have some kind of a heartbeat mechanism built into it, so it's made efficient. If the active goes down, standby can pick up very fast. And uh, I happen to be a guy who implemented you know, uh, active standby scenario in late 90s. So um, we have incorporated a lot of neat technologies into this, so which can, it can happen you know, very, very, very well for the customers. So one can be worried about, hey, if I am deploying one VCP on a server, that is, you know, VMX products control plane VCP on one server. There's a lot of still a lot of resources left, but they can optimize the deployment by actually deploying another, you know, um, VM on the top, and then they can actually deploy more and more of the VCP standby and active across a pool of servers that they can. That's one solution, where we can provide, you know, control plane redundancy. Uh, we got this, you know, uh, working. It's actually it's, it's in place. Uh, the the another thing is VFP scale out. Uh, I hope people are more people are uh, familiar with uh, VFP scale out. That is, in a forwarding plane, instead of sending all the traffic through a single VM, you can actually divide the traffic across multiple forwarding planes. Now, one has to be aware such a scale out is sensitive to network topologies, and there's more issues involved that one has to be aware. However, this is an another feature set that's in work, and we are you know, the, uh, deep into it. So this is something you know, uh, very vital for actually deploying the um, network functions in the virtualized manner. So one need not worry about whether the server resources is going a waste they can actually mix match between the control plane and the forwarding plane in a, in a more sophisticated manner. One has to take care of their, you know, it has to be the virtualized environment need to be architected properly. And however, you know, this is something, you know, they, that can be done. So as you guys can see, it could be uh, done all over again. So I'm just trying to go to the next slide here. 
the um, in this particular slide, uh, how do I? Uh, so in this uh, particular slide, what happens is when you actually deploy the forwarding planes across multiple things, uh, the one other thing you can notice is we are deploying the control plane VMs, but we can we are also deploying the control plane standby VMs. So these servers not only provide redundancy for the control plane, they also provide redundancy for the forwarding plane. So both of them are being provided. The, uh, we can make many features that are built in OpenStack where we don't, uh, they are readily built, they can be very usable, and um, multiple people have thought through many issues in many of the 30 plus, 40 plus OpenStack projects that, that actually we can leverage in these scenarios. So there are different scenarios that we actually you know, need to think about when we deploy control plane redundancy and uh, some more different issues that need to be thought through when we actually deploy forwarding plane redundancy. Everybody's starting with a control plane redundancy because you know, that's something, you know, the um, lot of things needs to be synchronized and then the forwarding plane tend not to be disturbed once you know, the traffic is flowing through and it's, it's only for scale out, which is in works for us. So that's the kind of thing you know, that people are thinking about. The, um, these techniques that we actually have incorporated into our virtual products is paying off and it is um, you know, actively you know, uh, under use and consideration by many people. So I just wanted to share our, how well our VMX product is you know, doing in the marketplace and it, it's just great. So I'm open to a few questions if you guys have any questions. questions. Many questions, okay, <laughs> he loves shout out loud. What, what's the advantage of using these redundancy uh, options when routers have been doing DRRP, ECMP, routing protocols? Why not just deploy a second one and run redundancy that way? You could do that too. You could do that too. <laughs> However, there are circumstances where you may want to do this. It's 15 minutes presentation. It's too long of a story to go into that. But the point is well taken. As a matter of fact, that's what we did to start with. You know, it's easy. But what I'm saying is you need more sophisticated policies in place and the feature sets in place if you want to deploy in a mission critical spot. That's the whole point of this talk, right? Hope I answer your question. Yes, yes, it's in production, customers are using it. Uh, 15 minute talk after that. So, do we have some of the features built into the virtual platform in the VM that are useful today for using heat or Quran? We use heat template. You know, voila, here's the magic. We use heat template. We are approaching towards, you know, one touch, you know, provisioning. So it's true. Oh, he says one more minute. I can take 60 more questions. <laughs> I talked about we can do that too. That's why I loaded to in scale out, right? Everything is active, active. You can actually do load balancing. But what my point today I want to emphasize within a few minutes I have is how we can build in resiliency. That's why I didn't delve into too much. I hope that answers your question. Sure, I'm glad. Uh, what projects have you leveraged? What OpenStack projects? Or is this a proposal to swap it out to the OpenStack? If you're leveraging heat, you are leveraging many components, yeah. right? I mean, you guys can look it up in the documentation. It's hours worth of work. You can be doing research. What are the components we are doing, using? So we are using that. And the OpenStack itself could be configured, like if you take like Contrail or something, you can actually leverage in a high availability architecture fashion. We support those things in Contrail. So it's already there. Okay, guys, thank you so much. I'll be around. Any questions, give me a call or talk.